Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode six, Schooling the Celebrities. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today, Michelle? I am fantastic. How are you? I'm awesome. So we have a couple of interesting topics uh, to run down this week. Uh, Not nearly as uh, full of agenda as we had last week, so hopefully we should be able to get this done within our half-hour time frame. First, we want to start off with a recap of Captain Marvel after having seen it after last week's podcast. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the Miller Coors suing Bud Light over their ongoing ad campaign that started with the Super Bowl. Then we will talk about K-pop star Jung Joon Young being arrested on a sex video scandal. And we'll wrap up our discussions in the news with uh, the celebrity college cheating scandal. And then, as always, we will finish off with our insightful picks of the week. So, let's get right into it. So, Captain Marvel, saw it last week. What do you think? Awesome! It was a very good movie. For an Origins movie, it was probably one of the best Origins movies I've seen in a long time. I would tend to agree. The one thing, I think, aside from, you know, a very strong plot and solid acting on everyone's part... The one thing that struck me was the technology used to de-age Samuel L. Jackson was mm. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it that it looked like the movie had been, you know been done ten twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that you know she landed in a blockbuster video certainly <laughs> helped that. Too. Yeah, that was definitely awesome. And the soundtrack, being a a girl of eighties music and growing up in in that time period that you know it was just kind of awesome like yeah this is the soundtrack of my high school career yeah yeah, (laughs) absolutely and and i mean we saw superpowers you know to rival a superman now oh absolutely she could definitely kick superman's butt you know in a heartbeat seeing what she was capable of doing kind of teases what she's going to do in Endgame, mm-hmm. which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. And and I think the whole movie itself was a nice setup for mm-hmm. for Endgame. Now. Yeah, I, I haven't watched it, but I, I saw some headlines that uh, there were a couple of fan-made Captain Marvel 2 trailers that a couple of people had, had gone out to and made, and yeah. they said, you know, this isn't official, but it looks really cool if this is what they, they do with it. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, where, you know, where she went for so long, you know, yeah. in between this movie and Endgame. I did like the twist of the Skrulls being the good guys in mm-hmm. this case here. So yeah, that were, was that was kind of nice. You know, nice little plot twist. They were the ultimate evil sort of in the comics. So mm-hmm. you kind, kind of expect it. Uh, Disney to take a little little twist on that mm-hmm. though, yeah. and of course I, I I want Goose to have his own movie too. Yes, well if <laughs> if he can consume, you know the Tesseract and spit it up like a hairball later on, he deserves his own movie. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so very good movie though. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So corn syrup and the Super Bowl. That's really what this whole fight between Miller Coors and and Anheuser Busch and their Bud Light campaign is about. You know, watched it during the Super Bowl. It was comical but pointless to me. I don't know how many people actually worry about whether or not someone puts corn syrup in their beer. Probably not a whole lot, or at least people that drink beer probably don't really care. I would agree. I mean, I've seen people put strange things. I had a friend of mine who would put salt in his beer. Okay. Which, hey, to each his own. But, sure. uh, you know, this controversy started back in the Super Bowl. And it was their King Bud Light or whoever the character is that they use going around trying to turn over a giant barrel of corn syrup to someone else besides Bud Light because Bud Light doesn't brew with corn syrup. Mm, okay. 
So there was a series of ads for that on TV, and then Bud Light stepped it up with really a shot across Coors' bow when they started a, a billboard campaign in Coors country. They, they put billboards up on a highway leading from Golden, Colorado, where Coors is brewed, to Denver. Oh, wow. That's... <laughs> which, I mean, it, it almost seems vindictive at that point. Right. It, you know, anywhere else it would have been fine, but there, that's... Yeah. You're, you're definitely... Uh poking the the cage with the stick at Uh, that point absolutely so this past thursday miller coors which is the parent company of coors brewing filed a lawsuit against Mm anheuser-busch who owns bud light claiming that quote anheuser-busch is fear-mongering over a common beer ingredient it uses in many of its own beers as a fermentation aid that is not even present in the final product Uh, Their statement went on to say, this deliberate deception is bad for the entire beer category, which we are showing the world, uh, we are showing the world the truth. They went on to basically claim it to be a marketing ploy, which isn't working because they point to the declining sales for Bud Light. Adam Collins, a vice president of communication for Miller Coors, says uh, it's really used only as fermentation, which is the irony of all ironies is that it's not actually in the final product that you drink. So why why are we at this level? Somebody's bored. Like, <laughs> it's really, you know, maybe overall beer sales are down. So, hey, let's, you know, let's have a controversy. <laughs> so people will go out and buy our beer and, and taste it and, and see. You know, it's almost like the, the cola wars that, you know, every now and exactly. then between Coca-Cola and Pepsi, you know, like, People are going to drink what they want to drink. And if you have, you know, th- there's always that person who, if you drink Bud Light, you're always going to drink Bud Light, no right. matter what. If you drink Coors, you're always going to drink Coors. There are, you know, are, are people that are very set in their ways, you know, with certain drinks, you know, unless you happen to go to a bar and they're out of one thing, you get something else, you know. So I really don't, it's kind of silly, but, you know. Maybe somebody was just bored in, in the marketing department. Who knows? Well, and, and Bud Light responds by saying, the campaign's about transparency. Quote, the recent Bud Light campaign is truthful and intended to point out key differences from Miller Light and Coors Light. Those beers are brewed with corn syrup, but Bud Light is not. These are facts, the company said in its statement. We stand behind the Bud Light transparency campaign and have no plans to change the advertising. Like, okay, it's fact, but I just don't understand how that's relevant to the average drinker. Right. And the other thing, too, is, honestly, the average consumer is getting corn syrup in almost everything that you consume. Right. That's that's processed, you know, soda and juices and, you know, it, it's a sweetener. It's, it's, you know, what's in everything unless, you know, you're going full organic and, you know, and maybe some... People that make their own beers, you know, they're like, oh, you know, would be like, oh, yeah, you could totally taste the difference. And really, I I, I just don't, I just don't, (laughs) they're just bored, I think. (laughs) Well, and it's interesting, the point that you made about beer sales being slow, because industry experts have come out and said that this is really just an attempt to attack ingredients and brewing techniques. And it's a distraction from the overall drop in sales that local breweries okay. are picking up on. Well, and that makes sense because you see all the local breweries popping up all over the place yeah. and you know, it's not only just a brewery but it's, you know, a restaurant or something, you know, so people are going and hanging out and and becoming maybe more social, you know, becoming more social drinkers as opposed to the person that's going to go and get their 12 pack you know, at the liquor store and, and, and just go home. So this is why we can't have nice ads on the Super Bowl anymore. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. So K-pop. Uh, it was big at the Olympics, obviously. We had several K-pop stars show up at the uh, Korean Olympics. And it's controversial now, just like U.S. pop stars now. Of course, it's all over the place. So, K-pop star Jung Jun Young was arrested in a sex video scandal. Uh, He was arrested over allegations that he shared 
sexually explicit videos of women taken without their knowledge or consent. Uh, the arrest warrant was issued hours after he made a court appearance, which he apologized to the victims uh, for his actions. He basically admitted fully to wrong. Now, this is where we, we depart from American celebrity. Right. They would never admit to doing anything wrong for you know months on end until... Finally. All right. Yeah, I really did that. <laughs> yeah, th this this reads almost like, you know, the ending to a Law & Order movie, right. a, a TV show TV where they show, admit right. to everything at right, the end. Right, right. Within a nice hour wrap-up. 30-year-old um, Jung came out after he was questioned by police. He delivered a statement admitting responsibility for the charges, saying, quote, I am truly sorry. I admit to all charges against me. I will not challenge the charges brought by the investigative agency and will humbly accept the court's decision. I bow my head in apology to the women who were victimized by my actions. That would never happen in the U.S. Oh, my God. This would be dragged through the courts. Mm -hmm. It would yeah. be settled out of court. Mm -hmm. Nobody yep. would have blame, and the victims would never have any kind of redemption. Right, right. And and that kind of speaks to the culture yeah. over yeah. there. They're very you know, apologetic. They know they did something wrong. You know, we're here, we'll, you know, lie through our teeth and, you know, and deny, 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 you know, as long as we can. Yeah. He's currently being held in Central Seoul Police Station, and he's accused of being part of an online chat group that shared sexually explicit videos of women without their knowledge, along with several other Korean celebrities, including Sung Ri and, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Cho Jun Hoon, I think. Uh, they're also alleged to be members of the same group. Now, if found guilty and having coming out and admitted your guilt, I'm not sure how you wouldn't be found guilty, but if found guilty, he could face up to five years in prison or a fine equivalent in U.S. dollars to $26,000, which I think that's a pretty you know low sum considering the damage you probably did to some of these people. Right, right. Um, Plus the fact that, you know, you're a K-pop star, you probably, you know can afford that can afford a little bit more than that well and uh, jong was dropped <clears throat> by his management company make us entertainment in light of these allegations so he might not be bringing in the same kind of salary he that was is true before. yeah i'm i'm guessing his career is probably probably over yeah unless he goes to you know and it could be one of those things where he doesn't perform in korea anymore but goes to another country you know, you know five years from now and you know, restarts, in, you know, in another band that, you know, that could happen. There have been a number of, you know, celebrities all over the world that, you know, have had some sort of sex scandal. Sure. Uh, Woody Allen, <laughs> you know, comes to mind. Who, well, who keeps... More than one sex scandal. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, and... His whole his, life has been a his, sex scandal. His whole, you know, and, and still, you know, makes movies. So, you know, unfortunately, it's a very forgiving, you know, uh, career path. I just thought it was an interesting story uh, comparison since we've been talking about the Michael Jackson documentary mm -hmm. and, and the controversy that surrounds him as well. So very interesting take culturally mm -hmm. Absolutely. Than, than in the U.S. So I had really wanted to avoid talking about this subject but i don't think i can nope because um, it keeps it, it, it it's, keeps... it's like the great the giant blob it just keeps morphing into something yeah, it's else the big ball of yarn that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and obviously that's the celebrity college cheating scandal uh that had uh felicity huffman and Lori laughlin caught up in the entire scam so for those who aren't aware and if you're not, you probably aren't listening to this podcast anyway, because you're probably under a rock somewhere. <laughs> um, nearly 50 people have been charged with taking part in a college admissions cheating plot. The Justice Department officials have said uh, this is the biggest college admissions scandal they've ever prosecuted. Uh, suspects were alleged to have paid upwards of $6 million to assure their children's acceptance into competitive universities such as Yale, uh, Georgetown, Stanford, and University of Southern Carolina, uh, Southern California. Sorry, it was run by a man named Rick Singer, who's already been indicted for it. 
he created a, not surprisingly, for-profit <laughs> college <laughs> admissions course. company in Newport Beach, California, uh, sometime around 2011. According to the federal uh, officials, the money would go to one of two illegal activities, either bribing SAT or ACT administrators to altering students' tests by, in some cases, having someone else pose as the student to take the test, mm. or in other cases, simply correcting the students' answers after they took the test. I mean, that seems so much cleaner that way. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Why go through the hassle of, you know, hiring somebody that's smart <laughs> exactly, exactly. to take the test when you could just, you know, correct why, the answers? Why, why implicate somebody else in this if you don't have to, right? right? Uh, the other thing was they would bribe college coaches to create fake profiles as the student for the student as an athlete, regardless of their athletic ability. Mm. So not only has this erupted all over the news... Every one of their brothers coming out of the woodwork mm -hmm. to comment on this now. Right, right. Former co-stars are coming out to condemn it. Uh, other celebrities that are completely unrelated to the story are coming out to condemn it. Just because they want to have something to say. And that's the thing. I mean, you've got people that are in the news commenting on this that I don't think have made the front page of news in a decade <laughs> in some cases. Right, right, so right. People are jumping on it just as great free press Oh, absolutely. They have an opinion. Right, right. It's like, oh, I'm against this. So right, that makes me right. a good guy. According to the complaint, Huffman and her husband, William H. Macy, made a purported charitable contribution of $15,000 to participate in the cheating scheme. Now, the interesting thing here is they have two daughters. Mm -hmm. So they made their $15,000 contribution for their eldest daughter. When it came time for the next oldest daughter... The allegations were that Huffman was engaged in negotiating this, but they decided not to for the second daughter, which I'm not really sure what that says as a parent. Is it better that you paid money that she had to get your first daughter in or that you didn't pay money to get your yeah, second did daughter she, in? Is she not the favorite? <laughs> right, right. Are you choosing favorites at that point? I don't love you nearly as much as I love her, so... I don't love you $15,000 <laughs> worth. There's just 10000 maybe. Ten, uh, maybe five. You know, we'll see. <laughs> the interesting thing is a lot of people had, had wondered why her husband, William H. Macy, wasn't indicted. Mm -hmm. It turns out the only evidence that the federal prosecutors were able to turn up was his involvement in the second daughter in which they didn't actually oh, participated. okay so it was like oh i didn't know she did that right oh i didn't find out about it until after, until the, fact after and, the fact that the know. check cleared and that's why we didn't <laughs> do it for our second daughter because it was because it was wrong right i wanted her to you know work on her own so the article goes on to say that Lori laughlin and her husband and i'm gonna murder this one mosimo massimo Januli. sure okay <laughs> They allegedly agreed to pay <clears throat> bribes totaling $500,000 in exchange for having their two daughters designated as recruits of the USC team, though neither of them participated in crew team. Right. I remembered seeing that where they posted pictures, you know, on their Instagram of them, you know, at like the crew uh, um warm-up room or something and yeah. you know they were never even part of the team and i think both of them now have left school because they were i, believe, so, I yeah. believe they you know with all the allegations they actually have left while all of this is settling down so so what are your thoughts on this whole <clears throat> thing would you you know assuming our daughter is wants to go to one of these colleges and is not eligible for whatever reason would you pay a bribe to get her in no no, there's, there are hundreds of thousands of different universities and colleges out there. And if, you know, if one isn't accessible, there's something else that is. Because then what kind of a, a message are you sending to your, your child at that point? Oh, well, I can take care of anything for you. Right. You know, it, it becomes that whole, you know, oh, you did something wrong here. Mommy and daddy will fix it. You know, you do something else wrong. It's okay, mommy and daddy will fix it. Oh, you couldn't get into this prestigious school because you didn't have the grades or you can't take tests? Okay, well, mommy and daddy will fix it to you. Well, what happens once, you, once you're once you in school? Like, 
how are their grades? How, how have their grades been? Are they paying somebody else to, to take the classes for you? Once you get out from college, are you going to pay somebody else to do your job because you couldn't do it? At some point, you have, have to let them grow up and, and make their own mistakes and, and make their own decisions. And if they weren't smart enough to get into these schools, well, guess what? You know, there's community college. Or don't go to college. Go to a technical school. Well, my father was always fond of saying that you don't have to go to college. The world always needs ditch diggers. <laughs> that so. is true. Uh, I agree with you 100%. Um, my take on this was really, all right, so I bribed someone to get you in. Now what? You're exactly. there. Exactly. You, what are you... you can't keep bribing people to take tests for you. Someone's going to catch on over the course of right. four years. Right, and of course, you know, there are the quote-unquote fraternities that have the answer logs to different tests and professors and you always hear you know rumors about oh take this teacher because we have all the answers we'll help you out and you know so yeah you know that goes on at every university so i'm sure you know but you'll have to get me that list (laughs) go go to that school but, you know, like like I was saying, you know, you, when are they going to grow up? You know, when they're, you know, are, is somebody else taking their final exam for, you know, calculus for them? Uh, you know, is somebody else, well, you know. And, and like you said, once you get out of school, eventually you're going to have to pay off or shut up. And if right. you've cheated your way through the whole time, then you're completely incapable of doing whatever it is you're trying to do. Right, right. So, and you know what? Do they need to worry about working in the real world? Probably not. Well, especially, you know, Lori uh, Laughlin's kids, because daddy is a fashion designer and, you know, millionaire, billionaire. So I'm sure if they really wanted to, they could probably go work for daddy and never right. have to, you know, right. worry about getting that college degree. So, but the thing is now you're seeing all these lawsuits from all these other students who weren't allowed to attend absolutely oh and and i think this goes deep to to the different schools that accepted them and you know and and you know so you start with the you know the test taker you know the 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 sat people and the act people um you know and then the the college admission people that probably got something padded to them too you know where you have somebody you know a hard-working young adult whose parents probably couldn't you know afford so many applications to apply to the schools but they did anyway hoping that they'd get some sort of scholarship or something and they're the ones that that are hurting you know from it too yeah yeah you figure there's only so many seats that they can give people absolutely yeah you're giving yeah the people that don't deserve them that's mm-hmm. deserving people that are getting left out yeah So it was a short news week, and I think that that was all the news that really caught my eye this week. Um, So I think we are ready for our insightful picks of the week, and I will bow to you, my dear. Sure. So my insightful pick of the week is another Netflix show. Um, I really don't watch a lot of reality shows um, because some of them are just so scripted and so... Unreal. (laughs) Unreal. Um... But one that caught my eye when it originally aired um, was called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And it was a very interesting show because it took five gay men and they would go and help some straight guy kind of go through like a, a makeover and some of the guys were kind of down in their luck or they were married or dating somebody and just had a, a poor outlook on life. And these guys would go in and help to reshape them and do like a whole makeover of their apartment or their house. There'd be grooming, there'd be cooking, basically, you know, make them a better, better person. And about three years ago, um, Netflix actually rebooted the franchise just calling it queer eye again with five with the fab five that now were centered around for the first two seasons they were centered around the atlanta area season three actually just came out uh the middle of march now they're in the kansas city 
area. So they kind of set up shop and then they they get nominations from various people that say, hey, you know, this person is such a hard worker, um, could really use your help, uh, whatnot. So like the the one episode was a um, a wife who is also a prison guard and very into camo and just not very girly looking and they go in and and transform everything and and you know they basically say feminine is whatever you make it to be it's you know it can be you know if you like masculine you need to stop the stereotypes of masculine and feminine it's whatever you like if this is what you like then that's you so lots of positive messages and all of the seasons they've they've done they've helped women they've helped men they helped uh two sisters there have been some people that were gay so you know some lesbians so it, it's a nice cross culture you know the one episode that that was really kind of touching was it was obviously not too long after the election and here they're in Georgia in a red state and they were America. <laughs> And they were helping a very, a very big Trump supporter. And here you have five gay men and, you know, and it was interesting to see how they were able to break the barriers, you know, where, where the guy that they were helping said, you know what, never in a million years would I think I'd, I'd be so warm and and open to you guys, but I love you guys, you know, I love all of you like brothers now. And, you know, so it's, it's interesting how, you know, the show has morphed from what it was 10 years ago, where it was just kind of like, oh, we're gonna, you know, make you look pretty and show you how to eat and eat better and, you know, groom better to now having you know this this social you know understanding much more fulfilling experience yes yes. you know and 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 honestly like almost every episode i end up crying you know because it's just tugs at your heartstrings and and it it just it's just you know if you're you know you want something a little sappy but yet funny and you know some of the food tips are actually kind of interesting too um, you know, and they do little tips and, and some of the grooming stuff, um, or even the clothes, you know, you know, cause they do people, you know, they'll, they'll do all different sizes, you know? So, you know, if you're a plus size, Hey, look, here's some ideas of, of how you could, you know, look better and feel better. And here's some healthier food options. You know, if you're used to eating tater tots and, and, and this, here's what you can make that's healthier and takes just as much time. So overall, really good show. I, I love the cast. I follow them all on, on Instagram. They've been making the rounds um, because the show, you know, the third season premiered. And I was actually kind of upset when I was watching it the other day because I finished the se- season already. It was only eight episodes. I was like, "Oh, gotta stop binge watching." <laughs> I know, see? I gotta know. Face yourself. <laughs> I know. I need to do better with that. Awesome. Well, good pick. Good pick. So my pick this week is uh, actually it's on Netflix, but it premiered on Nat Geo, and it's National Geographic's series "One Strange Rock." Entertainment Weekly described it as quote. A science show designed to thrill bored science students. <laughs> and um, and and who 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 told you about you, the you, show? You recommended this. <laughs> I give you full props for it. Thank you. <laughs> it's hosted by Will Smith, which I have to say I did not picture him being a documentary type uh, host. But the show does not come across as a typical documentary. And I think that's what, and that's why I told you about it because I started watching it and only had watched like the first five, ten minutes, and I was hooked. And yeah. I was like, I, I, I got to stop watching this. I got to show it to Joe because he's really going to like this. It's yeah. going to be up his alley. But what's interesting is it's a cross between a science show, a reality show, and a drama. Mm-hmm. There's ten episodes in a season. It is available on Netflix, all ten episodes right now. And what it does is that they basically talk about the natural wonders of the Earth they explore them through the eyes of seven different astronauts who've seen the world, obviously, from a very mm-hmm. unique perspective. Right. It's stunning cinematography combined with dramatic scene transitions all narrated into an epic story about seemingly mundane things such as air. And they make it sound interesting. Well, I, I thought the episode you know that we watched with the the amazon rainforest that was the air one 
and how, you know, the water gets from here to there. And it, and it was like, wow, that was freaking cool. Yeah. Yeah, they show, the show offers a unique scientific perspective on how so many seemingly disparate things on the planet are linked into a single interdependent and incredibly fragile ecosystem. The air episode that you were referring to, it starts out with dust storms mm -hmm. in, in Africa. Right. And the dust storms are picked up by the jet stream and blown across to South America. They drop the dust there, which is full of fertilizer that helps the rainforest grow mm -hmm. and the rainforest itself pulls the moisture up into a river in the air the mm -hmm. way they depict it right right that river drops snow onto the andes mountains the andes mountains then melt the snow yep. they pulls all the nutrients out into the ocean and the ocean then feeds microbiological organisms there that then create the air and it's just the whole, the way that it is shown mm -hmm. is so engrossing. It really pulls you oh, into absolutely. the show. Uh, totally, totally agree. Uh, it's It's got to be one of the more unique, mm -hmm. and I watch a lot of documentaries. I'm the yes, boring one. Yes, you do. <laughs> and it's it's got to be one of the most unique ways of, of showing mm -hmm. science that really catches people who aren't in the documentaries. Right, right. Because it plays out like a story. It does, it does. And at the end, you see where all the dots connect, and you're like, Wow, I get it now. Yeah, mind blow. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I don't have that sound key. Yeah, here. okay, we'll have to get that. Um, so that's that's my pick of the week. Um, did you have any closing thoughts, dear? No, nothing that I can think of. Okay, we will wrap with uh, plugs for all of the ways to get a hold of us. Um, you can reach us directly on the audio podcast at podcast dot insights into entertainment.com you can reach us on our website at www.insightsintothings.com you can reach us on youtube at insightsintothings.com for video versions of these podcasts you can reach us on twitter now at insights underscore things or you can email us with your questions comments and suggestions at comments at insightsintothings.com and I think that will do it for this week. Sounds good. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>